four stories. And please, I will want you to follow these four stories. Learn wisdom from these four stories. Now, the wisdom you will learn from these four stories will help your leadership life. I've told you that you are not just only a leader in church or by the work you do. You are a leader to yourself. Because every one of us have the right to lead our own life. So let's start. The first story, I call it the error of Ahimas. Now, the Ahimas is A-H-I-M-W-A-Z. The error of Ahimas. Second Samuel, chapter 18, verse 16 to 32. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we have come to your presence again this morning. We ask that our hearts that is open will receive instruction from you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my keyboardist. The Lord bless you. First, uh, Second Samuel chapter 18, from verse 16 to 37. Now, if you are not a member of the technical department, I will, I will make those corrections in the second service. Because we had uh, a meeting with all the ushers, and they gave me a lot of complaints about several things. I will discuss it. I will say it as I'm about starting the second service. But if you are not in that department, please come out. And if there's nothing you are pressing over there right now, come and sit down and also hear the word of God. Anyone that is not a member of that department should not be allowed to stay there. Chase them out in the name of Jesus. Are we set? Can we have the scripture now? Listen, and Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel. For Joab held back the people. We have a long reading, so you have to be very fast. 17. And they took Absalom and cast him into a great pit in the wood, and laid a very great heap of stones upon him. And all Israel fled, everyone to his tent. When the leader falls, Kilotoku. Now Absalom, in his lifetime, had taken a reared, sorry, and reared up uh, for himself a pillar, which is in the king's dial. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name. And it called unto, and it is called unto this day Absalom's place. I pray for every one of you. You won't die empty. Amen. You won't die without a product. Amen. You didn't hear. You won't die without a product. Amen. The beauty of life is that you have an you have extension. And let's read on. Then said Ahimas, the son of Zadok, let me now run, and bear the king five days. Let me go and give the king good news. How that the Lord had avenged him on his enemies. Let me run. Let's go on. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day. But this day thou shalt bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. This is not the kind of message that someone like you should go and deliver. Then said Joab to Cushi, Go tell the king what thou art seen. And Cushi bowed himself unto Joab and ran. 22. Then said Ahimas, the son of Zadok, yet again to Joab, But whatsoever, uh, sorry, however, let me, I pray thee, also run after Cushi. And Joab said, Wherefore will thou run? What is your purpose of running? My son, seeing that thou hast no tiding ready, there is nothing you are going to tell the king. Somebody have gone ahead. But however, said he, let me run, even if I don't have message. And he said unto him, well, run. Then Ahimeas ran by the way of the plain and overrun, and overran what? Cushy. You know, the journey of a man without purpose is always fast. 
because there's nothing he's carrying. He has nothing to go and deliver at the other side. But the man with a purpose, even if he's slow, you will see meaning in his life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even if he's slow, his life will make sense. You will see meaning in his life. You know, I always pray that I want my, my life, my family, my ministry to be a message to everybody. Yeah. That's why I'm always glad. All the servants of God that took me as their father in the Lord. Whenever they come around me, they, pick, they say something they have picked from my life. Now, today, when I'm talking about my children and my family, I say, look at my wife, look at my children. I am a practical married man. If you see my wife, you will know how responsible I am. That's why I always tell all the married people, every married man, how are we going to know you are a responsible man? They should look at your wife and children. One of our daughters was coming to give offering with her daughter. As you were coming to give offering, you are the one. I was doing like this to your husband. The man tried. If they see you and see your daughter, you know that the husband is, is a good man. So look at he was running and he had run, he had nothing to go and deliver. That's why I stopped running. I'm still coming. Okay, let's read on. But whoever, but however, he said, let me run. Okay, he overran. Cushy. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. And David sat that between the two gates, and the watchman went out to the roof over the gate onto the wall, and lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man running alone. A man running alone. Let's move on. We don't have all the time. And the watchman cried and told the king, and he said, If he be alone, there is tiding in his mouth. And he came a peace and drew near. Which means he said, if he's run, if he's running alone, he has tidings. Imagine you are now running without any tidings. And after the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the porter and said, Behold, another man running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. Because people will ask you the essence of your anointing, the essence of your leadership. I told us last month that the progress of leadership is what? Results. The worst leaders, uh, result a, a leader can have is to maintain his level. And that's not progress. Okay, let's read on. Let's read on. Let's read on. But not yet true. And the watchman saw another man, okay, and said to the porter, okay, he bring it news. 27. 27. And the watchman said, me thinketh the running of the foremost it's like the running of Ahimas, the son of Zadok. And the king said, he's a good man and comes with good tidings. So everybody was expecting that as Ahimas is going to land, ah, uh, and the watchman said, okay, we have taken this, 28, and Ahimas called and said unto the king, all is well. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king and said, blessed be the Lord thy God which had delivered up the men that lift up their hand against my lord the king. The king now asks a question in verse 29. Show me verse And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimas answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and me, thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it is. Ah, Omar, Luvasari, and the king's said unto him turn aside oh yeah turn aside and stand here and he turned aside and stood still let's wait for the man with the message 31 and behold Cushi came and Cushi said findings my lord the king for the lord had avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee 32 and the king asked Cushi is the young man Absalom safe and Cushi answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee, to do thee hurt, be as that young man. That is the man with the message. Now what is our lesson from this first story? I will take four as time permits us. Hallelujah. I can't, I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Now our first story here is that you must not allow yourself 
to be distracted by unhealthy competition. I come again. Do not allow yourself to be distracted by one thing, unhealthy competition. Now, if there is unhealthy competition, it means that there is healthy competition. I will explain. Now, look at this man as he was. He was not supposed to run. That energy that he had wasted running, that time that he wasted running, had, would have been used to do something else that would have been productive. But he ran because Kushi was running. Now, when we talk about an unhealthy competition, let's look at what it means. What is an unhealthy competition? It is when you involve yourself in what you do not have capacity for because you want to show. Now, leaders understand your level of capacity when you involve yourself in what... See, if everybody is deceiving you, don't deceive yourself. I know that in this world, we have people that we call praise singers. They are deceptive people. They know how to praise people out of God's will for their life. I'm telling you, they know how to praise people. You know, that was what they did to King Herod. They praised him out of the will of God. Oh, King Herod, ah, you are not man, you are God. Look at you, you are speaking. This is not the voice of man. This is the voice of God. The Bible says because he did not give the glory that belongs to God back to God. What happened to him? He died. Man got at him because an angel had to kill him. Now, what am I bringing out? An unhealthy competition, don't ever forget this, is when you involve yourself in what you don't have capacity for because you want to show. You know that you don't have capacity. Don't run the race that is not your size. There's nobody you should... Listen, life is not about showing. Show, show, show what to who. A lot of people today are entering into debt. A lot of people today are living a lie. Why? They want to show. They want to show. It's an unhealthy thing. This is what destroyed the ministry of Ahimas. We never heard about him after that day. And it was sorry to look at him. We set him aside. That's why you must understand your cap. I will sit there as I get there. Are he must involved in unhealthy. In what way are you involving yourself in unhealthy competition? Oh, Lagbaja has moved into his own house. He has finished building his house. He has packed in. Now, because he has packed in, you are now looking for all means. Ah, if you know what right me, I must look for that. You know. Now, it is now affecting you, affecting your family, affecting your service to God. Because of what? You are running a race that you don't have capacity for. Now, in case you don't know, your number one priority in this life, you were created to serve God. Your relationship with God is more important than your relationship with your spouse. You know? One of our old members died last week. She used to be our choir mistress. Now she died of cancer of the breast. Now I'm not talking about her, but her brother pasted online. What is a life is meaningless. Life is meaningless. One of my daughters in Ado Dickness Kike responded, "Life can only be meaningless without Christ." So I wanted to respond before I kept quiet. Thank you, Kike, you have answered. Life can only be meaningless if you are running life outside the purpose of God for you. Unhealthy competition. Now, let's look at, so that you not be confused, what is healthy competition? Healthy competition is when you allow someone's exploit to wake up the giant that is fast asleep within you. You need that one. Healthy competition. Should I come again? It's when you allow somebody's exploit to wake up the giant that is fast asleep within you. I remember many years ago, you know, I used to attend one, uh, the, I think his name is Reverend Konye, Kolade, World Impact. Somebody used to invite me for his book lunch. So, and I discovered that uh, uh, almost every year, in fact, not almost every year. Every year, this pastor is dedicating a new book. Every year, new book. At times, two books in a year. 
And one day, I was at that dedication service. I was so thirsty. And I said, Lord, who did we me not came in on my will? I preached so well by the grace of God. And I, I always write my message in lines. Lord, and I desire to also write books. So, do you know that it was that that challenged me to write my first book? What my, was my first book? Scriptural wisdom for knowledge. Is that scriptural wisdom for knowledge? I can't even remember. Scrip I think it's scriptural wisdom. I can't. Was scriptural wisdom? Now, the following year, I wrote a, 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 a prosperity keys and the reasons why you must prosper. The follow, you know, I kept going. I have written 13 books now. It was his writing there that woke up the giants in me. Now, that's we all need healthy competition. We need we need, we need what we all need healthy competition. The, uh, uh, okay, just like I shared now, if my, this small brother can take care of his wife and his daughter like this, and pastor is saying, Wow, your husband took care of you well. It should challenge me to, to wake up to say, ah, me too, I'll take my family issues very, very serious. I'll take my wife and my children as a project. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's healthy competition. Healthy competition is not when your neighbor killed chicken and because they are killing chicken, you now decide to say, ah, ah, so that he will not think that he's the only one that knows how to kill chicken. You now go, you begin to look for money. Now, he may be killing his own chicken from convenience. You may be killing your own out of frustration. Say here. Ushers outside, can you listen to me? You don't need to look towards the door. The police officers are already walking. Let your eyes be here, brother Inka. So, held, we need healthy competition. To, there are giants asleep in so many of us. We need healthy competition so that the giants in us can awake. That, okay, okay, Brother Shale just got, uh, finished his PhD and you stopped at, at a, a dig, first degree. And you say, ah, if Brother Shale could do this. And I have, I, I have capacity for this thing. No? Let me try. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me try. During my, my mother in the Lord's birthday, we were there to celebrate her. She just finished her, is it PhD she finished? She just finished her PhD. And she said, Pastor Prince Will. I said, Ma, he said, there are some places anointing will not take us to. Pastor, I'm changing you. Go back to school. I said, yes, ma. I promise you, ma, I'll do it. Healthy competition. But when the competition is not necessary, it's not healthy. Ahimeas had no reason to run. If he had wanted to do LD, he would have even followed Kushi. Okay, Jacob Jorin, can you have your LD? He's Tabade de Beman and Tonoreo. But he even outsmarted him. He outran him. He was running faster. Ah, no, no, I would, you know. See, calm down. So many of you, our leaders, I discovered that you are running the race of getting money at all costs. Because some young people in our churches are buying land and building houses. So you are no longer careful. You don't even feel concerned about the things of God again. Let me not, let me remind you this. Where you are today is as a result of what you did yesterday. Where you will be tomorrow will be determined by what you are doing now. I come again. Where you are today is as a result of the way you served God yesterday. If I hear that some of you are doing four jobs now. Five. Nothing bad about it. But see, your number one priority is to serve God. Not that I say, I need to make it. I need to make it. I need to Your number one priority is to serve God. Let's move on. Imagine if I get, imagine if I get a loan just to buy a brand of a car to prove that I am mightier or I want to be like my mentor. I told you, my mentor's vehicle doesn't use a shock absorber. They said they use balloon. 
the balloon, the two, is 700,000. 350 right, 350 left. Let me now say, uh, uh, what kind of vehicle is my mentor using that I cannot use? They can tell me about my arranged loan. I arranged loan for me. To my jack be more, to my hall be more, to my fi a wear the ruba. Mag ba ya wula wa kada, aku family mo kada si. So mo kawa la phone ni aku, omo mi deni, umaba mi wa. Abi, kwa lo beka kwa bede. That's unhealthy competition, unnecessary. I always tell people, you don't need anything to be who you are. Hello? No, I don't mean that you should relax. You need healthy competition so that the giants in you will wake up. But don't run the race that you were not built for. I wrote here, learn from Ahimas. He outran Kushi, but had no message to deliver. He outran Kushi, but had no message to deliver. What do I call him? Container without content. Now, a, a container that doesn't have content, where will you put it? Just me. That's what I use. I, I, I put with testify. Uh, Evan can testify. I used to share with my pastor. See, there is nothing a banker can afford that you should not be able to afford if you know your onions. Hello? If you know your onions, I don't need to sell car if I know my onions. If I want to change my car now, but I have not gotten to that point. You know, I was telling a minister, I have not gotten to the point where somebody will give me car free. Somebody had bought one car, Highlander, and says, sir, once your money to clear is ready, I will ship it for you. I said, Lord, I have been hearing testimony of somebody who said they deliver a car. Me, I have not gotten there. So, but I'm better than some people now, Abby. Now, somebody have bought. I, I, am I going somewhere? Now, if you as a pastor sit down with God, study the word of God, to the Gino Dada, you fast and pray, see anointing, sir, you'll be richer than a banker. But the reason why a lot of us are looking for extension is because we are not working on ourselves. Like Ahimias. Container, no content. Nobody will buy. Listen, look up. We, when we were young, we used to have these people. I don't know what, I can't remember what they call them again in Yoruba land, language. People that used to come and buy containers. They would come. They would gather the container of a, a bomb vita. Container. Uh, what do you oh, oh, yes you'll be shocked that they will buy an empty tin of baba salab bon vita for 15 naira when the one that has full content is how much now a kiloliter she had 5000 plus Wow, that's great. <laughs> now imagine. Now, and somebody is buying the same container because he doesn't have content for 15 naira. Stop competing so that you can have time to build yourself. It's first story, so. Can I go on? I don't say, what can you do? To avoid falling into this distraction. What can you do to, to avoid falling into the distraction of competition? What can you do? Number one, pay attention to your relationship with God in order to be able to know your part. Pay attention to your relationship with God so that you can know your part. See, it is the blessing of God that make it man rich. Pay attention to your relationship because it is God that can tell you what is next for you. It's not by you don't excel by doing what everybody is doing. I 
Uh, we were praying when God told us, God's power, kiddies, palace. We have a lafi palace, but I go God's power, kiddies. It was when we went for registration that they told me at the Ministry of Education that school cannot be a palace. That anywhere you see palace, they register it as a uh, uh, center where children play. So it was the, the man, the head of the head over there that now told me by himself, he said, go and change it to either God's power, kiddies, nursery school. He gave me several op options. He said, now, but go to LIE. Go and find out if they have not registered with all these ones I gave you. So I came back to LIE, checked. They have re registered with all. Ah. Kilo, Shamaya, my dear, God's power, kiddies, Nikoni. Before that, they had just came. It was in God's presence. The next thing again that we are going to do, God have told us, I can't tell you now. Success, you can't reach success by trying to do what everybody is doing. There is a path for you as a child of God. Now, do you think that if I want to be, go into politics, I will not have crowd more than ever in Ibadan here? I will have crowd more than him. Especially if I go to Kebola where I was raised. Where I did ministry at the early stage. And I go to my father's uh, uh, people, Atorita Mary, and begin to call them. The Bali of Okiaduas at present, when my dad was here alive, I got to greet him at home and he said, Ah, ah, Pastor Omoni. And he said, Pastor, I want to laugh in you. Munita Lenza. So if I want to go, God has not called it my path. Reverend Dexter Kindalamu went out for, came out for rep. He came out, he's a, he's a pastor, he, but that's not my path. It's not my line. So, we are answering the question, what can I do to avoid falling into the distraction of competition? What's number one again? Pay attention to your relationship with God to be able to know his path for your life. That's the first thing you will learn from God's presence, your path. You are different from others. Mr. Ojeleke has several I know of three sons that are members of our church. I've been my brother. Shegun Ojeleke, I know Shegun Ojeleke. I know Femi Ojeleke, and I know Busayo Ojeleke. The same father, the same mother, the same blood, but different parts. One is an engineer of generator. The other one is into publishing and designing. The, the third one is into, is it fashion they call them? She's, uh, what do you call, wonder what do you call them? hairstylist whatever imagine if the one that is a hairstylist decides to say ah or let the one that's into a design say maybe it will have been at Ugumpa now I want to me a church in the for plug in his hair I remember when at Abeni we got a job. They, they, they gave our offer to come and work in the microfinance. Have you forgotten? I don't used to forget people's testimony. And he called me, hello, Papa. When you can watch any microfinance, money loan salary, ah, salary here, that's I think you were saying 80,000 or so that time. Can I say, but I remember how you talked to me about Abeni with concept. You told me you prayed. That was what you received. He said, yes, sir. Don't be distracted. She continued. It got to a point. My, my wife just woke me up one morning. Honey, I said, what is it? I received a message for Abeniwe. I said, what is the message? He said, let her go into this engagement line. To, she should add it to her job. I said, me too, I've been praying. I've not received anything. We called her. You know, this is where I used to have problem with some of you. When we now told her, she said she want to learn. She will remember now. 
and she wants to learn from one of us, I say the person you want to learn from has just finished learning. No, 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 no. That she's a member of our church does not mean I should agree. I will get you somebody. So I call somebody in Lagos. Please give me one of the top two in Ibadan. When they gave me her name, I linked them together. Know your part. You can't know your part if your relationship with God is not strong. You just be running race that will not allow you to serve God. Number two, still on your relationship with God. When your relationship with God is strong, God will show you your size part time and you will flow gladly in it. God will show you your size part time. When your relationship with God is solid, God will show you your size. God will show you this is where you are for now. Follow this path. Can you see why the devil is working hard to make you not to have time for God? If you have some of you that are here, leaders, when have you done your morning devotion last? Some people cannot remember. I'm not talking about you just read the Wuru Wuru to the Answer Bible. You take your time to study. Now, I'm not bragging, but you know, if you have something, you have to cherish what you have. I always thank God for my wife for that one, one of those things. 3 a.m., if I am dosing, and maybe I move from my bed, I just change direction. You see her studying. You see her praying. She will now sleep again by five. Because if you don't have a relationship with God, one, you can't know your parts. Two, you can't know your, your size part time and you can't flow in it. Then every wind will want to be pushing you around. But want to something cotton shades in here? Want to something cotton shades in here? And you know one thing with the devil is that he will always be looking for how to take three things from you. Write this one down. Number one, he wants to take your salvation. Number two, he wants to take the important people that God has placed in your lives that are making you. Your molders. Number three, he wants to take your peculiar service for God from you. These three things guide you to your salvation. The people that God puts in your lives, and you yourself know that these people, God put them in my lives. And three, your peculiar service. Ah, we have three more stories, so let's finish this one. The third thing to do to avoid competition is this don't allow your ego to pull you into unnecessary race. Please, you have nobody to impress. Don't allow your ego to pull you into a necessary race. You have nobody to impress. Don't allow your ego to push to pull you into a necessary race. You have nobody to impress. Are you blessed from this story? Can we look at the next one now? Can we go to the next one? So please don't involve in unhealthy competition. Are you hearing me? Number two. Hmm. Okay, let me take number three and come back to number two. Number two. The wisdom of our Lord Jesus is another thing. The first one is error of Ahimas. The second one is the wisdom of our Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. Let's go. Everybody, please follow this reading. One, two, 
and let's read together. Let's go. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. I'm only hearing Pastor Imo. One, two, let's go. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they say, Behold, a man glutinous and a wine biber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Wait. What happened? Okay. You are in the spirit. <laughs> are you back? Now, look at this scripture. I want to show you something. Most of our leaders in the body of Christ committed blunder during this past election. And what was the blunder? They forgot that members of churches are not members of one party. In every church, we have APC. In every church, we have PDP. In every church, we have a court. Now, if I ask every one of you now, your candidates are different. Abi, I now took time to study. My mentor taught us this many years ago. The revival that took place in South Korea and how that revival was wasted. Listen. Paul, Dr. Paul Yonggu Chu was the pastor of the largest church in the world. On a Sunday morning, 1.2 million people will sit down on a Sunday service in church. Up till today, they have not seen a church that have gathered on a Sunday morning. I'm not talking about a crusade now. A Sunday morning, that, that number of people. But you know what? Tear the church apart. Just like Evan campaigned, uh, I mean, uh, went, uh, he didn't campaign. He, he contested for election. Under Afghan. Let him now win. The pre a member of the church became the president of the nation. So the pastor start, will come to the altar, mention his name, and say, We want him to come and speak. So when this president comes up, after they praise the Lord, people shout hallelujah, he will say, PDP, maybe APC, Accord. Oh, yeah, what's in the Accord? Though? You don't know. <laughs> Labor Party. Afga. Okay. So every Sunday they will acknowledge the president. Every Sunday the president will want to speak. It was not too long. You know what started to happen? The church began to tear. Other members that were not in the party of the, the ruling uh, party started getting offended and indirectly started to look at the pastor as a pastor of that party that if we remain here our party will not thrive leaders hear me you must be a father of all learn how to accommodate people i'm talking to you my leaders learn how to what accommodate people look at jesus christ our lord if it's not in chair, Oba one chair, if it's not in Muki, she put Mumbi out. Show me that scripture. Show me that scripture now. Ah. The Bible says, and they call him a friend of publicans and sinners. But Jesus said, this is wisdom. We have had in our mix some of our members that made mistakes we didn't throw them away and i've told you my calling i told you my assignment god said he will bring men that are like lion so that they, be, they can be converted to becoming men that will be around the house i saw somebody gave me a lion and said convert this lion to a dog i don't used to forget that vision till this morning if I am friendly, my wife is friendly, my children are trying to be friendly, and you, the leaders of our department, are very, um, uh, uh, not adamant, it's not a good word, are very hostile. It won't, you won't allow division to grow. Jesus 
Jesus was known as friend of sinners, friend of publicans. Please, workers, let the church be a comfortable place for the people to come and sit down to worship. One of our dickness came to complain, sir. I don't know. Uh, should I tell this woman? I said, which woman? He said, sir, she's she has her body odor. Is this? Is that? Is, I said, you don't. Uh, uh. Let her come to church. I said. I told her. I said one of the things you could do. Try to look for a bed date. Get good perfume. But roll on. Package it. I say happy birthday, man. But you know what a lot of our leaders did? If this government wants to deal with some, so many churches, it will deal with them now. In some churches, they lifted Nigerian flag and gave to Peter Obi. A pastor stood on the pulpit. He said, as for me, my wife, my children, we are obedient. See, we are, we are God's servant and public servant. We don't declare our opinions in public. I will never come here and tell you who I will vote for. The only person I can tell, Entama Di Bofunio, who must vote for this person, is my wife and my children. But for you, I can't tell you. That's why I don't miss second service. It's question and answer. And one of the questions I want to answer with all the prophecies that were prophesied, when we get this, but let's let's face, face this one. Do you know that even some of those some of those churches they have members that were in the APC. They have members that were in PDP. See, a leader must have what we call a large heart. Anyone that does not have a large heart cannot be in leadership. Even you people that are in church, do you think oh, oh, you are pleasing me? No, no, you sitting down. Do you think you please me? We had Chilo yesterday. There was nobody in the technical. But will I be angry? Can I go and mount to that place by myself? But look at them, beautifully dressed today. We are having good sound today. Once a period, learn on you, once a while. Once a while, brothers. We had to use phone to go and wake up our keyboardist. But look at him playing today very well. He woke up. Ah, is today Shilo? No, it's yesterday. <laughs> A leader's heart must be large. I know of some of our members here that their parents left our church in anger. The children came back. I know some children that are giving me seed, but their parents are angry with me. A leader's heart must be must be large. In fact, I know of some of you disturbing my daughters. They used to tell me, I won't chase you. Daddy, they are coming to my school. They are coming to my school. I said, Don't worry. Don't leave them. Everybody always likes to play around the ripe orange now. But you just face where you are going. Now, if I drive you, who will do what you are doing? Because I have decided, I've understand now that it is not everybody that wants to go to heaven. So leave everybody to go to where they want to go. It's true. Ah, change this woman. Judas in Jalini. Jesus knew that Judas was a thief, but if he should drive Judas away, nobody will betray him. But he needed somebody to betray him to go to the cross. So when they say Judas is still, they say leave him, he's fulfilling the purpose. Agbati uban shekiniti uban binu ulomo empo. We kima di bensi kini. Oh, you technical? Eh, she shelling me. Eh, shelling. Sit down in the church. 
Hello, me go with you, will any say she? Praise the Lord. So learn from Jesus our Lord. A leader is a father to all. Learn from the mistake of our several pastors, the way they handle the past election. That's why, before the election, everybody was asking me, sir, who will you vote for? I said, I don't even have PVC. I've tried to get it. I couldn't get it. When I tried to go, they said my number will be number 100 again. I can't line up. So I use prayer to assist you. Let's see whether we can take one more story. Are you blessed? I didn't hear you now. And let me take number four as the last one for today. We continue next month. Number four. Mm, I love this one too. The story of Elisha. Sorry. The story of why Elisha followed prophet Elijah with extreme seriousness is our lesson for today. It's a lesson. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 9. The story of why Elisha followed prophet Elijah with extreme seriousness. Let's look at this reading. After the count of three. One, two, and three. Let's go. And it came to pass. Uh -uh, I'm not hearing you. Let's go. Okay, you are angry. Maybe you voted for Obi or Atiku. If your candidate didn't win now, they will win one day. Let's read. One, two, and let's go. And it came to pass. When they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Wait, look at this scripture. Can you see the reason why Elisha refused to give up? Now, let me teach you this lesson. Every leader, listen to me. If your why is not strong enough, I will explain. It will not generate in you enough zeal to run for what you want. Now, when I say why, why do you want to prosper? Why do you want to be anointed? Why do you want to get to the top? Some of you don't have strong whys. That's why you lack zeal. I think it was one of my children that was asking me yesterday. We were just going, I was going to bat my head. He said, Daddy. I said, what is it? He said, how can a lady keep himself? You know why I say these things? So that you people too can learn. Some of you don't have fathers that are available to teach you. I volunteer to be your father. Some of you don't have mothers that can... Some of you, you have shouting mothers. Uh, listen to your children, let them talk. That, how can a lady keep himself faithful and not defile himself? I said, okay, I will answer you. I said, you know the answer? It depends on your pursuit. Two things determine your strength in life. What is chasing you or what you are chasing? And I asked, I told her, what's your pursuit? Leave this boy alone. <laughs> He's enjoying himself. Just leave him alone. Now listen, what's your pursuit? I, says, I now told her, I said, set certain dreams in front of yourself. That will ginger you to say no. If I go into a relationship now, it will, dis it will distract me. That once that dreams are very strong enough, you won't look at uh, listening to any refrat anywhere. You will move on. The same thing. The reason why Elisha was running after Elijah, he was looking for a double portion. Now I want to ask you, you, what are you looking for? If you don't have what you are looking for, you have no reason to run. 
You have no reason to run. I come again. If you don't have anything, you are wrong. you have no reason to run. But if there is a reason, double portion. It's okay. Elijah now said. Elijah now said, "If you see me the day I'm going, I will give you." Imagine. He said, "If you see me the day you are going, you are, you are going." And now you said, "The Lord has stay here. The Lord has sent me to Jordan." I be multi staying. Momo, what do you He ran. I mean, what did we discuss at home, mama, mama, mama. We discussed it this morning. That why is Uriola extremely serious with his book? We discussed it this morning. The boy is tired. That I saw it for the first time. He's tired of primary school. He wants to go to secondary school. You will see him with his book from morning till night. We were discussing. I said, it just changed. The boy is tired. And you know, the federal government now just made a law now. If you are not 11, you cannot be in um, secondary school. And they are waiting for you at jam. If you are not uh, 16, they won't allow you to do jam. That's the new law. They read it this morning. So, I, when the, his wife has pushed him. Ha! We took him to do an exam. I said, that's my son. I said, I've, I've set three exams. Three, you will do exam in three different schools. We will allow you to now go to the one you want to go to. Some of you, your why is not strong enough. The devil will challenge your why. If you don't have a why to be in ministry, to jump out of ministry will not be difficult. Atimu Amugari. Tamani Amugari. Ask my wife, Amugari. My wife has asked me before, honey, ha, kill a man, she say, Pelu, or Roba Bushiri, a Kiniko Kiniko. How long will you think on me, honey? How long will you think That was many years ago. And she understood this is what you can, I will allow you to help me. But this one, don't let it fall from my hand. Elijah came again. Elijah came again. He said, You know, you, you follow me to Jordan. Wait, God is sending me to Jericho. Wait, wait for wait, wait, Guinea. Wait for where? Or they issue. And I also, you know, I read um, Robert, Robert Kiyosaki's book. Of uh, I'm reading that book right now. Think and grow. Uh, no, sorry. Retire strong. Retire. Retire rich. Retire young. Retire young. Retire rich. He also said, one of the reasons why a lot of people are not committed to work is that they are not yet tired of poverty. They don't have enough why to pursue wealth. How you can sit down for shops since morning to night, no says, and you are not thinking of adding another business to that business. You are still young, you never marry. You remember, you hear me so. Never marry. Ah. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. I'm closing now. He wanted the double portion of his master's grace. If what is driving you is not strong enough to get you moving, you will not have the needed energy to cross barriers. Write it down like that. I formed that quote this morning. If what is driving you is not strong enough to get you moving, you will not have the needed energy to cross barriers. You know, I went to pastor the Elebu Church. Now, when I, I, read, I read the flow of the church for one month, the attendance, it was nothing to write home about. I went back to advanced method because I needed growth. So I went back to advanced method. He had growth that time that he was sent there temporarily. I won't tell you the method here. It's leadership. Do you know that we now started growing every Sunday? The day I started, we, were, we, 
we had 19. I announced that next week Sunday, we are going to be having so, so, and so, we had 19. The following Sunday, we had 23. Last week Sunday, we had 25. Last week Sunday, we had an, a lady evangelist that is a gospel artist. They moved to the estate. The members that I gave ambulance to that see, oh yeah, everybody, let's go. You take five. She she brought five people with the ambulance. In, an evangelist male, an evangelist female. They don't know each other from anywhere. And they said, We have come to stay. See, there must be something driving you. Evans' dad of blessed memory. He got born again at First Square Gospel Church before he died. He said, Agbatobasari Gurriegun. Tinkan Ubali Ulenko. Mean that be away. Agbatosari Gurriegun. Toma Peguni Chubusari Gurrie. Ejo. Tinkan Tibashi Pinkan Lee. Uninkan Watu to Vesariba. What is driving you? Now let me show you my drive. Maybe you can learn from it. What are my wise? This is Pastor Prince Will's wise. I want to be a very solid child of God. One that knows God so well. Now this is what drives me to the place of devotion every day. I want to be a solid child of God. That if you talk about God, if it's a lie, I will tell you no. My God will not do that. I don't want to be a child of God that somebody will come and be introducing my father to me and I'll be saying, eh? Are you sure that is my daddy? Ask my children, they will tell you. If you are talking to me and I'm saying, hmm, 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 hmm. What's the meaning? I'm not hearing again. <laughs> they will tell you, daddy, you are not listening to us. I say, see, I'm tired. Well, it doesn't make sense. So, because I have this as a why, I don't need somebody to force me. This one that some of you are using, you don't, uh, uh, oh yeah, have you done your money devotion? Ah, I can't even remember where my Bible is. Two, I want to be a responsible husband to my wife and father to my children. That's what I'm working at. I want somebody to see my wife and children and praise God for my life. That's why I'm working hard. I'm a hard worker. I'm not just a pastor. I'm both a pastor and I do little business. I want my children to go to quality school. I don't want them to be chasing them around from school. That's why I'm working hard. We didn't have the privilege. Our parents didn't sacrifice enough for us to, to go high. But I don't want to leave my children at the level where they'll say, our daddy didn't finish his work. If I don't finish my work on them, when will they finish it, then start their own. Poverty becomes generational when your parents hand over the burden of poverty to you. But wealth will become generational when your parents hand over the baton of wealth to you. Daddy is about to die and daddy is telling you, my son, just like a man in our mentor's church, the man is the owner of the old house in their, on their street. The man is, he clocked 70 few, few years ago, about three or four years ago. They said he distributed all his houses to his children. He's still alive. Who his 70th birthday? Unika lukuti mougwen. Kofumon prayer point ile. You know, some of you, you are the one training yourself in school now. Some of you, you add poverty to your husband's life. He's the one training you. He's also be training the children. But yes, he's, he's, he's the one training you before you now train the children. But I pray in Jesus' name, you won't hand over poverty to your children. You are angry. You are angry. That's why you are not saying amen. Should I stop? I'm showing you my own why. That's why, see, you can't see me in any useless meeting. Somebody just called me. Come and sit down. 
I always ask myself after every meeting, what did I gain in this meeting? Why am I here? Why did I come? My third reason, third why. Can I go on? I want to be a minister that is strong, one, in knowledge, two, in anointing, three, in integrity. That's why I read books. That's why the business people that I'll be speaking with during convention, you too, if you are there, you see the kind of things I will teach them. One of the things I wrote down that is making so many business to collapse in the hands of business owners is if you are a business owner and you do not know how to tell your staff, stop that thing you are doing, they will destroy your work. You must be bold enough to correct what is wrong. If you lost that courage in your place of work, sorry. So I want to be that kind of a pastor. I want to be that kind of a pastor. That's why I listen to fathers. I want to be that kind of a pastor. That's why you can't see me around girls. Because of my integrity. You can't see me. You can't see me around girls. You. Not that by the time I'm upstairs, one blogger will now come up and say, ah, this woman just came out. Say he's the son of Pastor Prince Willa Falabi. What do you have to say about it? If anybody come out, you should be the one to kill the person with your own blog too. That I know him. But if I'm walking around girls, you know, you'll be the first to doubt. We don't even know whether this thing is true. Eh? The number of girls with our pastor self. I've taken your time. We're going to close now. Let's summarize. The last thing I want to be, my drive. I want to be an out, I want to be outstanding in all that I do. Mufe yato. Ninungbogbo. You know, my wife didn't know that I was, I was, I was, sorry, I'm going to share this. I won't go deep. I was learning something. I was looking at her. This woman knows where she's going. She was angry about it. She was saying, no, 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 no. What this, my teachers are, this is not my style. This is not my style. This is not what I want. This is not my style. I was hard to be petting at home. No, I take care. Said, no, 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 no. This is not my style. I know that this is not your style. She has a standard, a drive. If you don't have a standard, there's nothing chasing you. Can you imagine if I don't have all this standard? Do you know that I can still be on the bed by 11 a.m.? Okay, so run too. Because full time pastor is full time nonsense. Now lie. Okay, me anything to back to work. Come on, Let me now be eating. Let my stomach now be like this. My tie is on top of my stomach. I can't run around to do. I uh, no no. My it's not part of my style. I don't need it for the kind of work I want to do. They put three pastors like that online. Very big big stomach. They have like uh, twins in their stomach. And somebody wrote, "Who needs help? These pastors or their members?" <laughs> what is driving you? Have you learned something from these three? That's why I see all the parents that are here. To get your children to be committed to the academics, give them a drive. Give them a drive. Give them a drive. Show them a picture that will get them to be running. That I need to be serious with my academics. If you don't put a drive in them, I can't remember the last time we owned the television in our house. In fact, we now wanted to own it. Was it long last week? It didn't refuse to work again. Because I was 
<laughs> so I will still have to cover that so you to come and carry it because I felt on last week. Oh, you realize the last person we are waiting for to do his exam. So I felt on last week. Television bad no more tomorrow. It's a permit you must put him on Mlara. What is your drive? You know what I want to make? I want to live holy. I want to make heaven. I, you know, on, on, on last day, when trumpet sound, some people will go to pastor's house when they miss the rapture. Abby? Pa, do. Ha! I won't love. I can check, Papa. We are Papa, Papa, and you. Papa, I love. Mama, not in love. I want mommy not. I go to the house. I she left home leg. I feel like I'm going to go left home. Ah, check your lunch. Eh, eh, sorry. Ah. Now, how will it now be? Eh, how will it be? Eh, what about Papa in Los Angeles? Rapture to take place. Eh, what about only? No, no. Which question will you ask? Ah, Papa. Share my baby. Rise up for your feet. Rise up for your feet. I said, no, no, God, look at the local soccer we got. I want my God of family. Are you blessed this morning? Did you learn something? Are you sure? We'll continue with our stories next month. Father, we thank you. Is there anybody that will not be waiting for the